Hello, nerds, and welcome to a special uh, spooky edition of the Engadget podcast. It is Halloween weekend-ish, right? Sure. Uh, okay. I am your host, Terrence O'Brien. Joining me this week is Devendra Hardware, senior editor in charge of... Zombie reanimation. That works. So I'm dead right now. Yeah, that works for me. Yeah. Uh, and also joining me, uh, editor in charge of distributing candy corn to <laughs> reporters who missed their deadline, Dana Woolman. Oh, yeah. If you missed your deadline, you get candy corn. Yeah. yeah. And like a penny for your UNICEF yeah. box. <laughs> um, candy corn thrown at you, though. If I like you, yeah. I'll give you mini Twix. I could go for some mini Twix mm. right now. Yeah. Well, candy to start my day. That's breakfast of champions. Right? Yes, candy and coffee. Candy and coffee. So, how you guys doing? Doing okay. It's been a lot of a lot I'm, of news this week. I'm great. I, I was telling Terrence mm -hmm. I slept nine hours last night. Oh wow! So I'm feeling great. Okay. Um, but you had a busy day yesterday. Yeah, I did. Yeah, we'll, a lot we'll, of fun stuff. We'll, we'll get into that a little <laughs> bit later. Um, it is Thursday morning when we're recording this. Mm -hmm. uh, so by the time this goes up, there will have been a big Apple event. Mm -hmm. um, and there will be some news from that, which we clearly don't know at this moment in time. Yesterday was a big Microsoft event. Uh, this morning was Twitter earnings, which we're going to dig into a little <laughs> bit later. Uh, it's just been a crazy, crazy week. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully Dana doesn't have to throw candy corn at anybody. Um, yeah, that'd be. Yeah. <laughs> don't get me started. No. Uh, do we want to jump right into it? Sure. And start things as we do every week with Flame Wars. You guys know how this works. You're going to debate the biggest uh, stories of the week. You get 20 seconds to make your opening statement. If you go over your time, I give you one of these. I'll allow you a time for a brief rebuttal. At the end of that, I will decide uh, who has the stronger argument and award you one point. We're going to do a thing at CES on stage live to punish the loser and... Oh. Okay. Reward the winner. And then we'll start this whole thing over again. We're That's gonna just going season. to CES. That's the punishment. But yeah, okay. actually, it's, well, the punishment is we send you to CES to cover it all by yourself. Uh, <laughs> I've done that, so that's fun. Yeah, so have I. It's, uh, it's not great. One of the worst things to ever have to do. <laughs> um, let's start with Apple. Again, this will probably be confirmed by the time this podcast goes live. But right now, mm -hmm. as of this recording, we do not know for sure whether or not this is true, but... Except Apple leaked it itself. Yeah. yeah it's in of. their own documents, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's probably going to happen, but it yeah. looks like the new MacBooks are not going to have an escape key. <laughs> um, I'm going to hold back on my opinion on this, <laughs> uh, but a Apple t just loves to get rid of things sometimes. Yeah. But there uh, will be that OLED touch bar. Potentially, yes. right? So, so um, I guess kind of my question is, is this the sort of thing <laughs> that's like essential that Apple's going to get a lot of blowback for, or is the escape key uh, an obsolete thing that probably needs to die, much mm -hmm. like the caps lock key should? Um, Dana, you can go first. So I'm preemptively annoyed by this whole magic toolbar thing in general, but the escape key, getting rid of it, um, I think is an act of hubris. I think it sucks for programmers, and I think it sucks for really anyone who considers themselves a keyboard power user. And there are some people out there. Don't mess with their setup that they use <laughs> all day, every day. In right under the wire, uh, <laughs> Devendra? Yeah, that escape key doesn't really do much, though, even for programmers. And uh, Apple is adding, potentially, uh, what we're hearing, this OLED strip above the keys. Um, and you could easily put an escape key there or a cancel key or something temporary there for full screen video. I don't you'll even never, know, I don't you'll even never know, buzz me, Terrence. I don't even know why I let you do this segment, <laughs> Adventure. Um, so, well, here, let me go back to you real quick then. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to throw it out there that I am currently using an X1 Carbon from Lenovo, which it doesn't have an OLED strip, but it has one of these like magic key strip things that does a whole Context bunch aware of strips. Yeah. yeah. Um, and as much as I love my ThinkPads and I love this laptop, that thing is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> um, why should I believe that Apple would do a better job with this? I, I mean, just in general, Apple, their whole thing is taking ideas that have already been tried and kind of refining them. Uh, honestly, I'm not too excited about the OLED strip either. It's just I, I'm surprised by the pushback against removing the escape key. Um, compared to like removing the headphone jack, which is a <laughs> fundamental feature for many feature for many people. Dana, I think I'm I'm also it, it's there's we're talking about the usefulness of the escape mm -hmm. key, but I'm also just annoyed by Apple's 
hubris. Um, like oh, this, oh, this yeah. is a standard American layout QWERTY keyboard. Uh-huh. Um, who is Apple to mess with it? <laughs> I'm annoyed by its, its its hubris here as much as I am the removal of mm-hmm. a classic. Um, long-standing key. I guess I'm, I'm a little more open to changes. Like I've been a big fan of uh, Microsoft's natural keyboards for a while. Those have this like split decision and that has saved my hands from all sorts of carpal tunnel injuries. So I'm, I'm fine with people. But like Microsoft didn't take a button away or like move the queue to the right no. side of the key. Yeah, but you use the queue. You never use the escape key. <laughs> I don't I do know. Sometimes I use it fairly frequently. For what? You just want to escape life, Terrence. I mean, it doesn't that, work that way. Okay? I, I definitely do. I do get frustrated occasionally yeah. and just slam the escape yes. key in hopes that it gets me out of my day. Um, but I mean, just even something simple, like if I'm watching a video yep. on YouTube and I want to exit out of contextually full aware OLED script cancel button. Yeah. Boom. See, here's the thing: is I don't know that I trust that contextually. It'll be in the same thing. spot in as the okay. Escape so, key. but yeah. so then. The operating system needs to be contextually aware yes. for a variety of different media plugins, a variety of different browsers. It has to know when sites and all that. Like, it sounds like the sort of thing that's going to be so reliant on uh, developers and yep. Yep. Uh, websites and all these other services to do the work for Apple. Which always seems like a bad idea to put the this is true. Emph- like to put yeah. that brunt on somebody else. Although it's probably not that difficult to just detect when video is being played, even if it's from like a, within mm-hmm. a web browser or something. Uh, Dania, do you have any last? Yeah, I mean, so I would probably be slightly less annoyed about all this if Apple hadn't dragged its feet on updating the MacBook Pros in the first place. Yeah. But there are people who've been holding off on upgrading for a long time, and now their ability to get the Mac a new MacBook Pro with fresh technology and the most up-to-date technology hinges on their willingness to um, change their habits, which is mm-hmm, annoying. Right. I think I'd feel a little less annoyed if they had already refreshed it and people who just wanted faster performance or longer battery life could have done it mm-hmm. already. Um, it does sort of feel like, um, I don't know. I don't know what verb I'm looking for here. <laughs> I don't want to say shoehorning, but... Um, well, it's the opposite of shoehorning, right? Because it's just kind of, it's mm-hmm. retracting. Um, <laughs> it not, makes no sense. Yeah, I don't know. Uh <laughs> Not surprisingly, I'm going to give this one to Dana, but I do want to explain uh, real quick that this this is less to do with specifically, I think, the for me at least in terms of this argument, less about the escape key specifically, and more I think about the point that she made about this standard layout, um, and this is pretty universal and pretty used, and I'm going to go back to the example I have in front of me of this Lenovo X1 Carbon that I love slash loathe, uh, because it has one major difference on the keyboard well it has two differences mm-hmm. that this did get a re- re- get rid of the caps lock key and yep. instead you have to double tap shift to caps lock oh wow which okay. i do constantly that's on terrible. accident that's and terrible. also instead of the backspace key wait being so that's why sometimes when you im me it's accidentally in all caps yeah and i think you're shouting at me yep. sometimes <laughs> that makes so much sense now and then the top right key instead of being the backspace key is the delete key huh. so it's like these small little tweaks yeah. really throw everything off. Like, that's understandably problematic. Yeah. I The escape key is like, you know, having a cut on your pinky finger. It's annoying, and maybe you'll get used to it eventually. I mean, I also think re- think back to when I moved over to a MacBook for the first time, and I didn't have a home and an end key, and I went, what is this world that I've suddenly moved <laughs> into? I don't know how this works. Right. Um, it seems like the sort of thing that... I don't know why you would do it. Like it just yeah. it just doesn't seem to make much sense. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's not going to be the end of the world, but it's going to piss people off <laughs> for no good reason mm-hmm. it seems. Well, what is I mean, at some point we will have to rethink these keyboards, right? And how we use them. And what do they what do these things mean? What does escape mean? What does tab oh, mean? What does shift mean? Don't like, get me wrong. Yeah. The entire keyboard is yeah. uh, an anachronism at this point, basically. <laughs> like, none of these keys make mm-hmm. any sense. The only reason we have QWERTY is because of what? Typewriter style, right? And yeah. Getting those arms in place. Um, so, at some point, all this has to be rethought. Maybe we'll just like lose one key a year <laughs> from Apple. <laughs> I think like the larger issue is Apple habitually telling people that their current habits are bad and that yes. you're doing it wrong and that you should do it their way. Yeah, And their true. way is the right way. But, you're holding you know, it wrong. I think that, yeah. The headphone jack. You're escaping is, it wrong. Yeah. I like 
I'm still more annoyed by the headphone jack than any of this stuff. Anymore. I mean, I think that's understandable. I am also more annoyed by the mm-hmm. headphone jack. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to our second topic, though. Uh, we didn't really get to talk about this last week, and um, I feel like we need to. Mm-hmm. Nintendo announced a new console. Yeah. Uh, we kind of blew by it, because I think they were announced- It was in the morning. Yeah, while they were announcing it while we were yeah. recording the podcast last week. Um, so the Nintendo Switch, which yes. is a- <laughs> combo home console slash portable console mm-hmm. um and Devendra you wrote this piece right the about how the best Nintendo is the is a desperate Nintendo yes yeah um so I want to give you an opportunity to talk about why people should be excited about the Nintendo Switch and this is going to be a great console uh mainly because it's Nintendo doing something different in a way just like they did with the original Wii and uh, even some of their older consoles right um they're not playing the same game as everybody else and combining their strength and portable with like a decent amount of power not the same as desktop power but you know it's uh I think that'll be exciting it'll be a different way to do consoles Dana I'm not even going to argue with the (laughs) innovativeness the uniqueness of it but I do question whether it will be the best of both worlds you can't pack as much hardware into the console itself um, but it doesn't from the photos it doesn't look like it will be as comfortable to use as a truly portable or truly mobile Mm -hmm. console Um, so I have questions about that both, both keeping it real tight. You today. no buzzer for you. I know. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Um, so, one of the things I guess, do we know the size of the screen, Devendra? I don't. You know, we don't have any exact specs. The screen looks like it's about seven inches because it looks very similar to the Wii U gamepad. Um, so I'd assume seven okay. inches. Yeah. So, so question there is, do you own a Wii U? Yes. And that control tablet. What are the yes. ergonomics on that? Like, like it's not a- good, but that. It, the control tablet is a huge thing. It has like big curves. There's a lot of bezel around it. It looks like a Fisher Price toy. Mm. Uh, I kind of love it for Mario Maker and playing things away from the TV. Um, but my thing with the Wii U is that I want that. I want the ability to take the game away from the TV and just like walk to the bedroom or walk outside and keep playing my game. And that's exactly what they're doubling down on with the Switch. Uh, and you know, they're kind of moving back from some of the other ideas, like having a second screen. That was the big sell with the Wii U, um, and nothing really took advantage of it other than maybe Mario, um, you know, Mario Maker. I mean, Dan, do, doesn't the versatility of this do anything for you? I mean, I know you're not a gamer. You know, it sort of does, but also I think one of the biggest things Nintendo has going for it is the social aspect. Um, people's... Um, the thrill of, of gathering around a Nintendo and playing certain mm-hmm. classic party games. It's not really a party if you wander off into the bedroom by yourself. No, but this is, I mean, <laughs> so the thrill, what they're doing is taking that thrill and letting you have it anywhere because you can take this you know, tiny console, t- uh, pull off the controllers and give one to your friend and you'll be playing Mario Kart like in the park mm-hmm. or on the bus or something. Okay. So it's taking that living room experience anywhere, which I, I think I'll love. So I have I have two mm-hmm. questions about that. Uh, for those who haven't seen mm-hmm. uh, the promotional video reveal video for the uh, Switch, you should go watch it. It's three minutes long. Yeah. yeah, it's not it's not particularly long, but there's several scenes uh, towards the end, especially where they seem to be playing up this social aspect. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff around uh, the 3DS and the DS original where you could like connect with other people the yep. Wii and the Wii U are very much built around this idea of party games I mean like Mario Party I can I've spent so much of my high school years mm-hmm. playing Mario Party uh, that it's shameful uh, but this seems a little bit different because you aren't gathering around a TV you're gathering around what essentially is a seven inch tablet a tiny screen yeah. and trading back and forth these tiny little controllers yeah. that are like I don't even. They they were they they're small. tiny. They look super. They look like tiny. miniature NES controllers with like the maybe directional stick, uh, directional pad, and two buttons to mm-hmm. select. Uh, the ergonomics, yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll have to see how that works out. But I love this idea, right? Of like local multiplayer. You can also bring two switches and have them like back to back and play a game. Um, so that'll be four people playing on two separate consoles. Mm-hmm. That sort of thing seems pretty cool if they can actually make it work four-player squ- split screen on a seven-inch tablet? No, no. Well, <laughs> two players on one, two players on the other, yeah. and then kind of playing a game across both. Um, so I guess my last question for you, Dana, is a lot of people seem to think that we're coming to the end of home consoles as we know them anyway. 
is this just kind of Nintendo getting out ahead of the curve as like mobile gaming grows, especially like casual gaming on the phone? And we've seen the first like non standard jump in like console generations. Mm-hmm. This is a like, half step jump. Yeah, right which now. has never really happened before. Mm-hmm. Happened before for Nintendo, you mean? For consoles in general. So, like, you know... We're seeing plenty of half-steps now, aren't we? Well, we are now, now, is what I'm saying, is we've already seen some disruption in the way the console market works, and we've seen this increased move towards mobile and towards uh, sort of a more uniform way of doing things. Is this just Nintendo kind of getting out ahead of the curve and going, like, you know what the next barrier to breakdown is? The difference between consoles and mobile. I mean, it it, it could well be... um, Especially the push toward casual gaming, and this is a point that I do agree with Devendra on from his piece, which is that it could potentially be Nintendo learning from its mistakes. And I think one of its biggest mistakes in recent years was missing the boat on mobile. Mm -hmm. It's trying to catch up now, Mm -hmm. but um, this this would mark a different and maybe better approach for Nintendo if it could be a little more experimental and, um, I don't want to say on trend, but... Yeah. Um, aware of how the market yeah. is changing. They're always experimental, but those experiments don't work mm-hmm. all the time, right? The game pad, the Wii U thing, was like a play towards tablet gaming, but they lost out on what makes tablets so useful for gaming is that you could take it anywhere. You could be in a car and play like a game on a big screen, and that was always the big appeal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not second screen stuff. No. Uh, I am going to give this point to Devendra. I, mm. I, I do think that, if nothing else, Nintendo had to try something new and mm-hmm. radical, at this point, to keep themselves relevant. Um, and they're doing that. Whether or not it works is something else, but yeah. we'll see. Based on the responses I've seen on Twitter, like, yeah, people are super excited about this. But I've also been in a lot of arguments with, like, Silicon Valley people who are like, well, Nintendo should just go all in on, like, the iPhone platform and just make games for that. And that, to me, seems like Nintendo selling its soul completely. So I yeah. never want to see that happen. Yeah, because that worked so well for Sega. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and remember them? Um and I, now I want to move on to our last topic of the week. I did this one just for you, Davindra. <laughs> this is this is my special gift to you. Oh man! Uh, so Netflix showed their first trailer for their resurrected Gilmore Girls yes. series this week, um, and I basically have two questions here that I want to I want to get to. A, do we really need to bring back Gilmore Girls yes, we specifically? Do. Yes, we do. <laughs> Hold up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> And two, isn't it time for Netflix to kind of move on and stop resurrecting shows as a matter of business at this point? I can, Mm -hmm. I guess, I'll let you guys discuss this and obviously make your points, but this, it was something when they did it at first, it seemed to make sense, and now they've continued it, Mm -hmm. um, and they seem pretty unique in that respect. Um, Devendra, I will give you the first shot to defend the Gilmore Girls. Well, first of all, the Gilmore Girls is a fantastic show. And uh, as soon as it was put on Netflix, I saw it like just rise in popularity. My wife, I showed it to. She got through the whole series in like two weeks. Wait, That's wait, like wait, wait. six seasons. Wait, wait. Yes. I'm going to pause yeah. your, your timer. You showed it to your wife? Yes. Oh, I'm geez. breaking gender norms left and Jesus. right, Terrence. <laughs> Continue. But the show is great. The show is fantastic. Um, so it makes sense for for not Nintendo, uh, Netflix to like really invest on one of its most popular series. Uh, I got to buzz Devendra. <laughs> I got to buzz you over the Gilmore Girls. Yeah, it feels good. It's great, <laughs> Dana. Um, Gilmore Girls. Uh, Gilmore Girls. Girls. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan. I'm, I think it's overrated. Um, it's certainly no Felicity. It's no <laughs> Dawson's I like Felicity Creek. too. I like Felicity too. Um, but Netflix keeps, they need to just do something more original for their originals than bring back old shows. Um, it, it doesn't, hey, you're on my team. <laughs> yeah, I know, you still ran out of time, and now we can deteriorate. System into- is rigged. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> System is rigged. It's rigged against you, Dana. Yes. <laughs> Actually, to be clear, it's or, it's rigged against Devendra. I've already yes. marked the point down for Dana. Yeah, <laughs> this is all a, fight, a losing battle. But Gilmore Girls is fantastic. The show, I mean, yeah, later seasons... Not so much. Same with Felicity, by the way. Um, so we agree on that. Okay. We, yeah. And I, w- I, I really do like that show, but I said it mostly to mess with you. <laughs> yeah, you won't mess with me because I like Felicity. Okay. And also gave us J.J. Abrams, who's now doing Star Wars, so mm-hmm. who did Star Wars, yeah. Um, so, but, so to your what you're saying, I get that Netflix needs to do more original stuff, but the thing is they have been doing that, a ton of that. They've been bringing in shows from other countries and like branding them as Netflix originals, but they've been doing their own content, too. And uh, with like some of the Marvel stuff, 
So I think it's a mix of things. Like this is a definitely a nostalgia play, but I think an important one because um, it'll get those Gilmore Girls viewers to come back and like check out this new stuff. And it'll also get more people in that loop of catching up. So it's, it's good want. for business for yeah. Netflix. I don't actually think the content is the same. It's not mm. the same when you bring back a show like Arrested Development or yeah. Full House. It's yep. never going to be the same when you bring it back. Oh. So I think in a way it's, it's better for business for Netflix than mm -hmm. it is for the nostalgic viewer who just yeah. wants a good show to watch. It depends on how it's done, right? Arrested Development was kind of experimental in the way they brought it back. Didn't quite work. I know a lot of people hate that season. I, I th there's a lot to like about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. as a guy who was a big fan of Arrested Development, mm -hmm. like, it was fine. It wasn't great. It wasn't amazing, yeah. Because they were trying to go for this weird non-linear narrative thing where you could watch any episode and just, like, know the story, and they, like, did pieces of character stories throughout all the episodes. Didn't quite work, but it's all up to the writers. It's yeah. up to the creators, and they're getting... Um, you know, Amy Sh uh, Sherman Palladino back, so that's that's all great. Um, but I mean, the, mm -hmm. Arrested Development was the first of those like big names that they mm -hmm. brought back, right? That was like the first big show they resurrected. Yeah. Um, and since then, they've done it countless times. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who Fuller House was for. I don't that know who Fuller weird. House was for either. Yeah. Um, in, in preparation for today's episode, I, I sat down with Dana and we were looking over the entire list of like, resurrected or rebranded you know in theory full, fuller house was for me i used to um look forward to watching full house as a kid on, oh, too, on yeah. friday night but i actually um would be too embarrassed to watch <laughs> it now not embarrassed like in the sense like it's a terrible show not embarrassed like i worry about what you you think of me but embarrassed like i cringe at bad yeah. tv and bad movies yeah mm -hmm. And but I don't like watching people embarrass themselves. Along with doing this, Netflix is doing things like BoJack Horseman, a show which directly like comments on that whole like full house genre and is so weird and depressing and hilarious that I don't think any other network or any like I can't imagine anywhere else, maybe HBO yeah. that could run something like that. Well, and, and I guess so here's my question then is they have things like BoJack Horseman, which I haven't watched, to oh, be honest. I know I need to. Terrence, I know, I know. That show was made for you. I'm sure. I've heard <laughs> this. Uh, but doesn't doing things like bringing back the Gilmore Girls, which is personal opinion of Gilmore Girls yeah. aside, a have you Have you actually seen Gilmore Girls? I have seen every episode of the Gilmore Girls at least twice. <laughs> okay? So you were tortured by the Gilmore Girls. I... I loathe the Gilmore <laughs> Girls with every fiber of my being. So good. It's like all of the things that I hate about Aaron Sorkin oh, fed through a, a fight. Fed through a lens of like <laughs> uh, waspy New England women. I it's just yeah. it's I have yeah. no interest. It does nothing <laughs> for me. Um, <laughs> but I mean, doesn't we're gonna that, have a fight on the podcast right here. Like yeah, we, we really going we, across we, the table. <laughs> this a fight almost broke out in uh, the chat room the other day over this. <laughs> But does it doing things like this kind of water down their brand at some point? Like, mm -hmm. Netflix is trying to make this play for being a home for, like, great original content, pulling people away from cable and all that stuff. And they're spending so much time mm -hmm. and effort and money doing things like Degrassi, the next class. No, people but you know Degrassi. what? Like, how I love yeah. Degrassi. The next <laughs> class is garbage. I think that ship has sailed. I mean... Netflix, to the extent that it's a modern day blockbuster video store, has tons of crap on it that Netflix mm -hmm. itself didn't produce. And also some of the stuff it does produce is also crappy. House mm -hmm. of Cards, I love it. I'm addicted to it. Is it still a crappy soap opera? Yeah. 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 I mean, well, I gave first, up the season. I yeah. stopped watching it too. The first season was very, very good. Yes. I loved it. The second so, like, season. This idea that Netflix only does and airs high quality stuff, like that ship has sailed a long time ago. It's more like how long has we spent talking about Netflix on this podcast? That's why they do it. Yeah. It's, it's brand, mostly just because they want. Get their brand out. Yeah. They, they want people to yell about the Gilmore Girls thing and get excited. And also, a point I see made quite a bit, too, is when they have original series, those can go in any territory. And now that Netflix is global and all over the world, like they don't have to pay rights to bring those shows there. So they want as much original stuff as they can, even if it's a reboot. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I... We, as we established earlier, the system is rigged, and uh, I am awarding Dana the point just oh, because my hatred for I wish for I had Gilmore a Bernie Girls. Sanders voice. <laughs> I won't do a Trump voice. Um, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'll you, have my Gilmore Girls, and I'll be happy. Yeah, and you've won plenty before. <laughs> uh, I'm just scoring personal points here. Yes. I, get, I very rarely And get I could use that. a few wins. I don't usually win on this it's show. It's true. You, you do need a, a, a healthy bump so that you don't end up at the bottom of the lily the uh, pile for no. CES. Um, 
Yeah, no. <laughs> you don't want to be the one who gets tortured on stage. No. Leave that to, like, Velasco. Yeah, because he'll he'll be all for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that man has no shame. It's true. Hey, nothing wrong with not having <laughs> shame. 